Hello guys, uh, Pete here, N6QW, and I wanted to give you a little tour of my latest transceiver that employs the use of a Heathkit um, single sideband filter that came out of an HW101. I paid 14 bucks for this on eBay, and I added a few modules, uh, what I call my standard modules, that I've used throughout the years and have created a 40 meter a uh, single sideband transceiver that right now is uh, actually in operation on Whisper. I've got it on 40 meter Whisper right now. And uh, I'm running a little, I guess about close to 3 watts out, 3 watts out uh, on this. So uh, basically what happens is the signal comes in from the antenna and there's a uh, double pole, there's a single pole double throw relay right here which routes the signals. So on receive, we have that going over to this port here, which is a single 2N3904 uh, R receiver RF amplifier right here. And over here is a duplicate circuit, a 2N3904, which is the transmit pre-driver. So a uh, signal goes in there. Then it goes, it's routed with this little relay right here so that this relay uh, on receive We'll route the signal, uh, similar coming out of the antenna, through the single stage RF amplifier over back here to a uh, bandpass filter, a 40 meter bandpass filter, which is pretty much standard design. From the 40 meter uh, bandpass filter, uh, we the signal now goes over because it's at it's at seven megahertz, goes over to the stage here, and this board is the IF module which essentially has the receive transmit mixer and I'm pointing at a really small ADE1 uh, right here and then there's uh, the Heathkit filter and the two bilateral amps and these are the plusy amps which are the 2N3904, 2N3906 which is, which is a direct lift out of EMFRRFD except I I converted that circuit, which was, uh, I made several of these that are leaded parts, and this one is surface mount. So the match to the filter is 50 ohms to 2,000 ohms, because that's what the Heathkit filter is, uh, is 2K. And uh, that is easily done with uh, uh, a, a transformer with a 3-turn primary and a 19-turn secondary. 3 turns squared is 9, 19 turns squared is 361. Divide 9 to 362 and you get 40. That's the same as 50 divided into 2,000. So we match the filter. Then on the output of the second bilateral amplifier, these stages are bilateral, by the way. This little transformer right here, I'm um, feeding 8 volts in here. And on receive, um, uh, one part of the circuit is at ground. And on transmit, it's at 8 volts. And that's what the purpose of this little relay is right here. And this other relay here is the power switching that switches the voltages between transmit and receive. So coming out of the uh, second uh, bi-directional stage here, which is the 2N3904, 2N3906, goes into a, a second ADE1. And this ADE1 here it operates as the product detector on receive and the balance module on transmit. Now over here we have the Arduino with the SI5351. So essentially this is the LO and this is the BFO and the uh, BFO is switchable uh, so you can make it upper sideband or lower sideband. So what happens is on receive we get recovered audio and that goes into the audio amplifier board which is comprised of a NE5534 driving an LM380, lots of audio. And then the trans on transmit side when this now becomes a balanced modulator uh, 2N3904 uh, is a single microphone amplifier, and of course, uh, right behind on the front panel here is the audio output and the mic amp input. This is the color TFT display. These are a bunch of switches, and these switches allow you to either select upper or lower sideband or select VFOA and VFOB. Now, what I've done is I've set up VFOA so that on default, when it boots up, it boots up at 7200. Uh, but on VFOB, it beats up, uh, be, uh, boots up and went, went in upper sideband to uh, 7038600, which is the whisper frequency. And then this little button right, this little push button right here is uh, the tune button. You t hit that, 
and that generates a uh, a tone, uh, a 958 hertz tone, uh, essentially one kilohertz tone, which can be used for tune-up. And over here, which is not readily seen, is another push button, and that's to uh, you could operate the step rate off of the encoder, which is right here. But also I have in parallel with that another push button. So instead of trying to push the knob, because every time I push the knob, I seem to um, move the dial on the frequency. And uh, so in essence, uh, we can we just duplicate the, the terminals on the back of the encoder. And there'll be another switch to be installed, which is a single pole, uh, a single throw switch, which I call the MOX control. So I can put it in a manual transmit, hit the uh, tune button here, and it'll produce a tune signal. Now... On transmit, uh, we come through the uh, bandpass filter because the bandpass filter is always connected up to the IF module, and it goes into this stage right here, which is single 2N3904, and there's a little pot here to control the gain, both on receive and transmit. It goes from the 2N3904 driver uh, to a 2N2219A, uh, and this thing is capable of producing over 100 milliwatts. As a matter of fact, I had this operating on Whisper, uh, with 100 milliwatts, and uh, we got out to the Hawaiian Islands. So um, essentially, the uh, kilometers uh, per watt is 39,000. And then the output of this uh, driver stage, which has been optimized, uh, goes here to the uh, final board, which is the IRF 510, and then mounted right next to the IRF 510 is the low-pass filter, which is always permanently connected to, so there's no hot switching the low-pass filter on transmit. It's always connected to the IRF 510. Uh, this um, enclosure, essentially the base plate and the front panel and the back panel, uh, were uh, used on another transceiver that was the subject of a QRP quarterly article that had a, uh, an amplifier board using nothing but dual-gate MOSFETs. And um, that, that never really worked uh, to my satisfaction, so I just jerked it out and kept it, and uh, I reworked the front panel, and we'll take a look at that here. And there we have the uh, front panel, and it looks very similar to the sudden. And uh, we got the upper and lower sideband, VFO, AB, the uh, tune button, the main tuning, the display, and then over here is the volume control and the mic and uh, the audio amp, and then this is the step button, and it'll be another button here for the MOX. So uh, this this has worked uh, very, very well. We've had it on the air uh, running uh, Whisper, and now we have got uh, we get about 3 watts out uh, in the Whisper mode. And here's my digital adapter uh, that I built that I've been using. So uh, it's a very nice rig, but the, the key element here is getting some of these filters uh, you could have a Yesu filter in here. This is a Heath kit. You could have a Kenwood. And the flexibility of the Arduino enables you to uh, just change the code so that the whatever the IF is, you can make this uh, come out what you like. Uh, I had thought about making this a two-bander, uh, but I decided not to and just to optimize it here on 40 meters because at least for the next couple of years, 40 meters is going to be quite an active band. So uh, there we have our, our new transceiver. Uh, take another view across here. You can see the IF amp strip here, the uh, two matching transformers and the surface mount and uh, the, some of the relay control relays. This is the uh, dual board that's uh, uh, on receive. It's a receiver RF amplifier. Same exact duplicate circuit is the uh, transmit pre-driver. This is our driver stage 2N2219. 2 2N2219. 2 there we go. 2N2219. And then the IRF 510 back here. These these are all kind of standard modules. And, of course, the we have an Arduino Nano uh, driving the uh, uh, SI5351. And, of course, over here is our audio amplifier stage and the microphone amplifier stage. So it doesn't take much to put one of these together. And the code is almost the uh, exact duplicate of the code that was used on the sudden transceiver. The only thing that was changed was the IF transformer. The sudden used a 9 megahertz. This is a 3.395. Um, a friend uh, saw saw what I was doing here, and he scooped up a he scooped up a, um, a Heathkit filter, and uh, I paid 14 bucks for this, not including the shipping. He he got one for 14 bucks, including the shipping, and he tested his, and it was tested pretty good. So these things are available, and you can uh, build a Kraken uh, 
uh, transceiver here uh, using the SI5351 uh, along with the IF and the Arduino. Here's the uh, screen here, and this is in the afternoon, so there's not too much uh, too much cooking right now uh, with regard to uh, activity, but uh, we've been spotted uh, out to about 1,500 miles or so, and we see a few of the stations. It'll get better later on in the afternoon, but uh, this is just a, uh, a netbook with my digital adapter and the, the new transceiver. So this is Pete and 6QW signing.